Welcome. Today we will have a closer look at the lifenet.xopl.org website. And here you can see the visual, visualization of um, ledgers being closed. So we call a ledger more or less also block. So this is, for example, uh, e so each block has its own um, ID here. Uh, for example, in Bitcoin, it's called a block height or also for in Ethereum. Um, and all of these ledgers, so one block is one ledger, has an, has an ID. And you can see here that the ID is be always being incremented by one. So it's in this case 34, 35. So we have so far 67,315,935 ledgers validated. And here you can also perfectly see the definition of a blockchain. Because you can see here block by block being added and it, it concatenated or chain, well, concatenated, added to a chain. So on the right side, if you go, if you would go entirely to the right, then there would be the start at some point, it would, do, would be the ledger index one or even zero. So I don't know if it starts zero one, um, but it's fine. And coding usually we start at zero. Um, right. And you can see also di here different colors. So we'll go look into it later. So almost right now. But like I said, the highlight here is that every time a new block is being added. So this this one is the, the one which is being created. And all of them which are behind are permanent and immutable. They can't be changed anymore. They are persisted. So after they have been, after the ledger has been, has been closed, it's a permanent record more or less. And that's the entire concept here. And as you can see here, for example, always, if we have a close look, we can see right now that there are 101 transactions in there and we've got different colors. We can see right now in the UNL, how many validators uh, of the UNL are right now agreeing. So we can see all of the validators out of the, of the UNL uh, agree. And we can also see all the other validators, which also uh, are involved here. So we've got in total, I think, yeah, 116 validators are currently involved in the consensus. And out of, the, out of these 116 validators, 39 are in a UNL. Right. Um, now we will have a close look at all the different colors. Uh, yeah, right. So the blue ones, it's, it's also showing you that here, these are offer crates, meaning that somebody's using the DEX on the Exopo Ledger to trade one token for another. For example, somebody's trading XOP for, uh, in this case, Chinese Yuan. And the blue ones, like I said, offer crates. Then we've got the orange ones. These are offer cancels. So somebody created the limit buy or sell order and then afterwards decides to cancel it. These are the orange ones. The green ones are payments, meaning either the person, somebody sending uh, XOP or an issued currency. For example, if it would be sending XOP, it would be a green one. Or if it would, for example, also be sending the issued currency of euros, then it would be also green. So for example, we can see here the sum is saying 0 0.15 and then a certain issued currency. You would have to translate that hex value back to the name. Uh, well, you would have to look it up, uh, but it's not important right now. But I ju just want to show you here, if you just click on some of these green ones, you can see um, that in this case, some, some is sending a token, some is sending a token. Looks like an airdrop though. Um, but we have maybe also some XOP. Uh, yeah, there's somebody sending XOP, for example. This is somebody saying 17.79 or 453 um, XOP. Right. So, what else is there to see? We've got also these, uh, well, brown ones here, or, or gold. Yeah, it's rather gold. So, these gold ones here, these are trusted. So, somebody's either removing or adding a trust line or editing a trust line. Then we've got at last these uh, pointed out ones, so these with, with less opacity. These are ones that failed, we can see here. There, somebody tried to create an offer, but we've got a tech insufficient reserve offer, meaning that the person who tried to create an offer didn't have enough reserve balance, because as we know, if you create an offer, it, it takes two XRP, it locks up two XRP as the owner reserve, even, even if it's only for a short time, meaning that if somebody doesn't have two XRP remaining, uh, then it will fail. We can see some again, we've got here tech insufficient reserve offer, uh, we've got here, for example, tag destination tag needed. So somebody's trying to send something, but the recipient needs a destination tag. Um, right. So also you can see all of that on the xpl.org website. If you just enter codes, there are all the the tab and the tell the tab and the uh, codes. So I'm just going to go to the tag codes in this case. Um, I would have to look up the abbreviation again. It will show uh, up here. 
Um, but there are obviously, if you do a transaction, there are different codes which tell you wh what has gone wrong. So for example, we've got here the, uh, what else is there? Take oversize, okay, right. So we can see here, for example, is tag claim, unspecified failure with transaction cost destroyed, for the tag due full, uh, and so on. So you can see many different exceptions uh, why a payment can fail. Tech, path dry, for example, that happens when somebody didn't set a trust line. So if you're trying to send something to somebody, but the person didn't set a trust line for something, we've got tech no line, and so on. So, right. Um, like I said, it's a perfect website for having a visualization of what's right now happening on the Excel Ledger. Um, you can, like I said, it, it accumulates the entire fees. It shows you the quorum, which you need, so the 80%. 80% out of 39 is 32 in this case. Um, what else do we have here? The average transaction fee of each ledger. This one seems a little bit higher. Uh, that's because it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing payments, you only need to pay 12 drops. But there are also other payment, uh, other methods. So um, where you have to pay a little bit more than that. So it can be even six and sometimes people intentionally also overpay, it's also possible. Somewhere there was a nice list of the transaction cost. Uh, oh, maybe it was here. Yeah, great. So we've got here the reference transaction, what else is there? Right, so it's even outdated, so maybe I'm also gonna request a change here. Because in this case, the account delete transaction is not five million drops, it's only two million drops anymore because it was lowered, it's the owner reserve. Um, right, so let's go on here. What else can we see here? Obviously, we can see the time when the ledger was validated. We can also see uh, the average time until the ledger closes. So right, currently, it takes 3.86 sec seconds until the ledger is closed. And with the ledger closed, it's also final, so we don't need any confirmations or anything. We can see that on average, 80 transactions are being done and that it's currently handling about 20 TPS. So we are currently handling on the extra ledger 20 transactions per second. All right, so that's it from this website. I hope it was helpful. Uh, it is also it also has uh, a, um, a view for the test net, so you can also have a look at the test net uh, if you'd like to look at that. So if you test yourself something, so for example, go to the test XP toolkit website and would we'll use it now. So it's just generate test credentials here and the secret. So if we would have a quick look now. At that one here, you can see that I'm gonna be in here right now. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get funding. So this is probably a thousand being sent to me, right? So right now a thousand XRP are being sent to this address. And that's as far as I know, probably my address, isn't it? Yeah, it's mine. So as you can see here, <clears throat> uh, it's a testnet and I can also, for example, whatever, let's just go to any account here, copy the address. So I'm gonna just send somebody randomly some XRP here on the testnet. I'm just kind of copy that and if you for example would do the transaction so I'm just testing a lot of different trust lines and we're just going to send 100 XRP now and if we have a look again at the explorer oh no where is it oh, I lost the view didn't I yep I did yeah I have to do it again unfortunately so I'm just going to move both aside now go back here okay great so let's do it one more time Great, let's, conf let's confirm that. And if we have a quick look here, we can see any second that there's a green dot in here. Okay, the next ledger then. Yeah, great, that's our dot here. So right now we did a payment of 100 XRP, uh, 10 XRP to this address here. So, uh, right, so you always, so everything that happens either on the test net or on the live net uh, is being displayed here. So even if you use any app or whatever, if you do a transaction next, exit ledger, it's gonna show up here. Right, um, yeah, there, there are also other tools here. If you go to network, you can also see a nice visualization where the nodes are all located. So you can see all the different nodes. Uh, what else is there? You can see the versions of the different nodes. You can see the load in this case, right? So there's an entire list of all the different nodes. Um, if you go to validators, you can also see all the validators. Um, so right now we've got, like I said, 138 validators be taking part in the consensus and right now 39 in the UNL. And it's being visualized here with these beehive, whatever, with these hexagons. I oh, just want to say beehive structure, whatever. Um, right, and you can see also like here, all the, all the validators at the same time trying to agree on the next ledger and on all the transactions that are gonna be, transactions that are gonna be persisted in there. 
So you can also see here the color change. Now everyone is going to change to purple and so on. You can also have the same live view, uh, so not the same, but a similar view on XOP scan. And here you can see all the validators, which are in the UNL. So those are all right now trying to agree. Uh, then we've got all the other values also uh, participating. And if they're doing a good job, so you can see here the metrics. Uh, how uh, about how good they are agreeing. So you can see here the one hour agreeing whatever metric, the 24 hour and the 30 day hour agreeing metric. And the higher it is, the better. Obviously, the agreements should be as high as possible. And the validators which are good at agreeing, so validators which are not faulty, uh, will be included in the next, uh, well, will be included on the UNL uh, in the next time or whatever. So you can see, for example, this one here is only agreeing at 73%, it's not good. And you can see here other validators are doing a good job. For example, if Flare FTSO.com, you can see it's it's a, it's mostly agreeing, it's perfect on that. So obviously, um, sometimes validators have a down, have downtime and then, then it uh, goes down. But over the 30 days, having a good agreement uh, is perfect for a validator. Because obviously they, they have to agree. So we've got also other, we've got IntelliBranch.ch, uh, so other validators which are doing a good job here and uh, they might be included soon also in you now. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope I hope it was helpful and see you in the next video.